everyone. So I wanted to welcome you all to CS350 uh, online again, <laughs> this time for the fall of 2021. Um, my name is Leslie Eisted and I'm one of the three instructors for this course. Um, certainly you have uh, seen Ali, one of our other instructors, post some of his videos on the course website. And we have a third instructor, uh, Huma, who has also You'll also see her uh, around Piazza and so on and so forth. I apologize first off for my kind of bizarre setup today. Surely if you've seen some of the videos before, you'll be like, hey, the video quality was a bit better and so on and so forth. I'm actually um, not sitting at my typical computer and even the one I'm on is badly, badly, badly overheating. <laughs> Give me a minute, I'm gonna to try to stop the uh, AV issues. Forgot to close off an application and that's probably causing the computer to completely overheat. <sighs> Don't try to stream from your Mac, that should be the lesson. So, what today's episode is going to be is kind of an introduction to what, how this term is going to run. And again, I apologize for the video errors. <sighs> My Mac is overheating for no reason. Um, but what we're going to be doing actually, it seems like just the video feed has, uh, been destroyed. Give me a second here. Let me try to restart that video feed. Nope, it's down for the count. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> I'm not having a lot of luck today. Anyways, let's just move forward, assuming that you have a live video, even though that you very clearly have a static video that is broken. Maybe at some point the video will come back up, but it's a Mac, so I'm not going to assume it's ever going to work. So how things are going to run this term is very, very different from how things would run any other term, as kind of evidenced by this video here, is um, that uh, we are not doing live episode streaming like we do in previous terms, which I'm actually kind of sad about because I think that gives you the best value if you actually have twice a week live episodes at a scheduled time just like you are actually running you know to a real classroom unfortunately that's not really feasible for us this term um as i mentioned in the piazza post and maybe you've seen it i excuse me actually um quite pregnant shall we say um i have about three and a half weeks to go and when I say to go, I, that's a very loose sense of timing because babies don't arrive on their due dates. It's not like Amazon shipping where things they say, oh, we're going to arrive on this day and it arrives on that day. No, it's more like um, this is when the baby should come, but they could come any time from three weeks before or three weeks after. So because we don't want to have a situation where I'm live streaming, and I need to run to the hospital, we decided that maybe live episodes weren't the best way to go this term. So I do apologize that we're not going to have live episodes. So what we're going to do instead of live episodes is we are actually going to give you the previous terms episodes, which all of the seasons of CS350 are actually posted onto the course web or, or on YouTube actually. So we're gonna put season 21, so spring 21, um, on learn for anyone who's not able to access YouTube but for anyone who is able to access YouTube you have access to spring 21 winter 21 uh, you have all of the ones from the previous year and there's even one season that was actually done in a real classroom in front of a real class before this whole pandemic went down so there's lots and lots of video content on the YouTube channel that I listed for you guys to actually, you know, watch and go through at your own speed. So I'm going to let you guys do that. And again, I do apologize that it's not live. Um, that's just, that's just what we have to do to make this term work. 
Um, so some of I'm going to switch over now to these slides here, and hopefully that actually works. Uh, losing faith in this computer minute by minute. If you're wondering, I don't actually usually use this MacBook for streaming anymore. I actually was using it for streaming um, at the beginning of, I think, last term, but it became really clear to me after a Mac update that the throttling on the CPU made the video and the audio lose sync so bad nobody could follow along. So I ended up, I, I moved the streaming over to my Linux desktop, but unfortunately in my house right now, I don't have access to the Linux desktop, so I can't stream from it right now. And I did get a new laptop, if you're watching the Spring 21 episodes. Um, it's just, it's not set up yet. <laughs> so I wasn't able to do that one either. Also, it's webcams in a really weird position. It's in the keyboard of all places. I don't know why anyone wants to have a web camera pointing up their nose or at the underside of their face. It's a very strange place for a webcam. I have an external, but anyways. All right. So I just want to go over a few details. And I know this is in the first episode of Spring 21, but I just want to reiterate some of these things um, in person here. So hopefully this actually works. We'll find out. Seems to be a bit of a lag, but there we go. Okay. So you all know the course website, and uh, please understand that we are still kind of in the process of making sure that everything on the course website actually matches with the course slides. The course slides should be your go-to. I know these slides say uh, Spring 21, but they're the same. Uh, so you don't need to worry about, about that. We haven't changed anything. And uh, all of our communications, though, any updates, anything like that is going to be on Piazza. So we're not going to be updating the website throughout the term with announcements and so on and so forth. Every kind of uh, announcement or update is going to be posted to Piazza. So please make sure that you are logged in and able to use Piazza, of course. Um, the one request that we have is don't actually, you know, post your code publicly because everybody will steal it. It happens every term. Um, so if you do want to post your code to have a TA or one of us to actually look at it, make sure that's a private post. And yes, I see you all commenting, just sees, just use Unix or, or Unix, Linux already. Okay, look, the machine I have been using for streaming is a Linux box and it works absolutely beautifully. But um, my daughter is actually doing virtual school uh, beside it. And so I am in the basement where I can't actually use it. Yes, the streaming stuff works beautiful in Linux. There's no throttling or any of these other horrible things. All right. So the course notes, which are these slides here, these are, I feel like, the required notes. Um, and I'm not sure if Ali's going to be posting his slides as well, but they're also available. Ali and I have two very different takes on this course. My take tends to be much more centralized around the assignments um, so OS 161 and MIPS. So this is the, the main line CS 350 notes. And, um, so if you're looking for assignment help, these are going to be your best slides and your best videos for that. Ali, on the other hand, um, OS research is actually his thing, and he is going to be focusing a bit more on, well, how does Linux do things? How does Windows do things? And a lot less on how does OS 161 do things, or how do these things work in general? I actually think if you want to get the best experience, that it makes sense to go through both sets of slides and both sets of videos. I think Ali's videos are actually going to be a fair bit shorter um, so you shouldn't have a lot of, um, of overhead there. So that's just, just my take on things. Um, to get the fullest experience from this course, look at both. Um, all right. So is there a textbook? Uh, there is technically a textbook. It's totally not required. Please don't buy it. It's actually available completely for free on the internet. 
Um, and in fact, if you go to the course website under the assigned readings tab or the readings tab, you will actually see that for each of the modules of the course, we've actually linked a PDF of what you could read if you choose to. But you are not required to read this textbook. You are not required to even look at the readings. There will be no questions that are based off of these readings. Um, it's just for extra information, extra whatever, if you want to. And some people do read them, and, and all the power to you if you do. The textbook's actually a really good one, so it's, it's fun. Uh, now, just to look at the grading scheme for things. Um, there are four assignments in this course. The first assignment is assignment zero, and I want to tell you, you could go and do that now. Really what assignment zero was meant to do was it's meant to make sure that you can install OS 161 and compile it and basically familiarize yourself with what's actually there. Um, it's worth only 2% of your final grade. I think it's out of five marks. Did you get it to work or not? Again, you could go do this right now. And then we have three regular assignments. They're each worth different amounts. These assignments, um, we will be releasing A1 and A2 shortly. We're just making a few corrections with them. Uh, A1 is actually a new assignment from two terms ago. And when you create a new assignment, sometimes you realize, okay, maybe this didn't work so well. We need to make a few changes to make it run smoother, or maybe we need to make a few changes to make the grading easier. So our wonderful TAs, uh, Ryan and Emil, are actually going to be um, making a few changes to assignment one, and then hopefully we'll have this out next week and ready for you. Uh, assignment one is very different. So many of you have probably heard of the traffic simulation problem. That is not assignment one anymore. What we are doing with assignment one now is we want you to get some real world concurrency experience. So you're going to be doing p-threads um, and just getting some experience with multi-threading and synchronization with p-threads. So I think that's, that's pretty fun. And then assignment two and assignment three, that's where you're going to be doing everything in OS 161. And yes, assignment three does build on top of assignment two, but if you are watching the pre-recorded episodes, you'll note that um, we will very clearly tell you what elements of the previous assignment need to work in order to get full marks on the next one. We also have two reading assignments. These are new from the spring term. And essentially what we're asking you to do, there are two papers research papers that we're going to ask you to read and then answer some questions about them on Learn. Um, these will be posted about seven to ten days before the deadline. Um, and you can read the paper. They're fairly straightforward papers. I think they're a lot of fun. So for example, uh, one of the papers is the lottery scheduling algorithm, which is a really fun one. And then the other paper is a uh, log structured file system. Uh, personally, I like the lottery paper a lot more. It's a really fun scheduling algorithm. And then we have, in, there's no midterm in this course, but we do have quizzes, which are worth 10% of your grade. The quizzes are all done through Learn. Um, you get one try at them. Each quiz is worth like one point something percent of your final mark. So um, they're not worth that much in total. Uh, the one thing I do want to say is that you have the entire term to complete them. So we want to make sure we, we're we making the assumption for this course that you are living in the Arctic Circle and you have dial-up internet. And so <laughs> we are giving you a lot of flexibility in when you submit the quizzes and how much time you get for the quizzes and things like that. Now the assignments you don't get as much flexibility for, but any of the learn-based things you will get um, a lot more flexibility with. And then the final assessment is worth 35% and that is going to be um, run through Learn. You get the entire exam period to do it. You get three attempts at it and that's, that's how it's going to work. Um, we do have a rule that you have to pass the quizzes and the final assessment in order to pass the course. That's very standard. Every single course has that. Uh, as I said, four assignments, though, these are to be done by yourself. So if you're looking like in the distant, 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 distant past of CS350 or CS354, as it used to be known, you'll note that assignments used to be done as a group. That's not true anymore. We, for the last probably eight years, we've been doing them uh, individually. So 
not as a group. Um, you're not going to be writing your own operating system. You uh, And I'm sorry if that's something that you really, really wanted to do, but you won't be doing it. Um, what you are going to be doing is adding or fixing some features of an existing operating system. The operating system we are using is the one we've been using for the last little while. It's called OS 161 and it is a MIPS based operating system. So where there is assembly, it will be all written in MIPS. And I think most of you have done some MIPS through CS 241, uh, but you've done ARM through CS 251. And I want to say that ARM and MIPS are actually very similar in nature, at least their assembly languages, and they have lots of other similarities in um, how they behave under certain uh, circumstances, as we'll see. You do not have to write a single line of assembly code for this course, though. Uh, it's just helpful to know a few details about how it's done. Uh, the operating system itself is only about 22,000 lines, so it's not very big, so it's very, very manageable. And if you're ever looking for something in it, Grep is your friend. Grep is always your friend. Now, we know that, uh, you know, meeting deadlines can be hard when you're in person. It's really hard when you're not in person. So we also offer what's known as slip days. And the idea is you get five slip days you can use at any point in the term. And simply, you can use up to three on any one assignment. And all you do is you just submit after the deadline. So if you submit within the 24 hours of the deadline, you use one slip day. Within 48 hours of the deadline, you end up using two slip days and so on and so forth. So what that means is that the deadlines are flexible a little bit. And there's no penalty for using your slip days, none at all. So don't, don't worry about that. The, there's nothing special you need to do either to use your slip days. All you have to do is submit after the deadline. And it's done. That's it we'll handle the rest. My recommendation to you is to save your slip days for assignment two. Definitely don't use on any on A0 and please don't use any on A1 because you're going to want them for assignment two. Um, assignment two is worth the most and it's also probably the hardest. But remember that you can only use three on any assignment. So just keep that in mind. I've already talked about um, the reading assignments. Reading assignments you cannot use slip days on. Um, the question on, on uh, Twitch here is how many slip days total? You have five total. Five total. So what I usually see it is three used on A2 and um, two used on A3 would be pretty typical. Uh, but yeah, reading assignments. These are going to be done through Learn. There is no slip days for them. They are very straightforward. Read a paper and answer some questions about that paper. The reason why we've added this is because we wanted you to get some experience with kind of the research side of operating systems. Even though these papers are quite old, we thought it would be a good experience for you to see some um, actual, you know, creation of different operating system uh, theories and such. They're, they're really fun papers to read too. I, I think you'll enjoy them. Now, of course, they want me to talk about cheating and all that. Don't cheat, obviously. Um, because we don't change the assignments very often, we are completely aware that if you go on to Git, you will find probably at least, at our last count, like three years ago, there was like 85 solutions. Um, by now, there's probably like 160 or 200. Um, we're aware the solutions to these assignments are out in the wild. Uh, and what's interesting is actually some other schools use OS 161 as well, and their solutions are out there as, out there too. So like I've seen U of T assignment solutions. Please, please don't use theirs. <laughs> they don't work. Uh, you won't get any marks if you use theirs. We have a lot more rules and restrictions, shall we say. <laughs> um, but we, all of the code that's out there in Git, we've actually downloaded. And uh, so your assignment code will be compared to everybody else's in the class along with everybody who has taken the course previously. And um, if, if we find instances where your code matches somebody else's code a little too closely, we will take a second look and we will try to figure out, is this just a coincidence because there's not really many ways to solve this particular problem? Or is this because this is actually copied. And I mean, there's ways we can tell. If you have a debug message and the 
previous code has a debug message. And you both have the same text, and it both contains the same spelling mistake, which is a very silly one, but obviously you copied it. Because the probability you both have the same debug message in the same spot with the same spelling mistake is pretty low. Uh, the consequences are zero on the assignment and minus 5% at the final grade. And if you actually take a look, these assignments are worth a lot. So if you cheated on like assignment two and got caught, that's 15% of your mark you lose plus minus five off your final grade. So that's like losing 20% of your grade in one shot. It's just not worth it. Um, we are on Piazza all the time we have some wonderful uh ta help on piazza this term uh we've got andrea and we've got sherman and they are both previous uw undergrads who have taken this course before they've been through these assignments and they know the ins and outs they are there to help you along with the instructors so that you don't need to go and steal the code from elsewhere Yes, I see you on Twitch saying, oh, so we just got to correct all the spelling mistakes or make every possible spelling mistake. We still find those ones. We definitely still find those ones. It's not that moss can't be tricked. It's just, it's a little harder to trick people. All right. So there are some things that we do allow in this course. So we don't want you reading other people's solutions on Git because usually what happens is you run into a problem, you can't figure it out, you go on Git, you read a bunch of solutions, and then even if you don't directly you know, copy the code, you open up your code base and you start writing and your code ends up being a little too similar to what's on Git. That's not allowed. We do allow you, however, if you want to talk with other students in the course to get general ideas for how to approach the assignment or how to uh, approach um, solving a particular bug, that's totally fine. But don't write down answers, don't share code, and, and so on and so forth. Um, that, that's, don't overshare, I guess, is what we're, we're trying to say here. So, so that's kind of the, the deal there. Now, another thing which is a bit different from previous courses you may have had is if you have actually taken this course before or taken it and dropped it halfway through and you have submitted some assignments before, you are allowed to reuse your previous work. However, you need to let us know first and you need to understand that if you drop the course because you got caught cheating on an assignment and then you resubmit the assignment that you got cheated on and you get caught again, like you're gonna get another cheating penalty. So don't do that. Understand that we are going to rerun your code from before through the software again. And understand also that if we didn't catch you the previous time and we do catch you this time, it still counts. Yeah. You are allowed to use your previous work. Please ask us first um, so that we can make it so you're not cheating against yourself. We're still gonna compare you cheating against everybody else, but yeah, we're not gonna mark you as cheating against yourself. All right, so a few other little administrative details that aren't really in these slides. Um, I'm going to actually keep this very short, just so you know, um, because the, the actual introduction to what is an operating system, that's already in the S21 episode one, and I, I don't want to go over that again right now. Um, so a few things. It's really, really important this term that you use source control. Like, and I don't even care what kind of source control you use. You can use um, Git. Um, if you're using Git, please ask one of the TAs for help because I don't use Git. I don't like it. Um, I tend to use Mercurial or SVN, mostly SVN. Um, you can use CBS if you want. You can use SVN. You can use Mercurial. You can use Perforce. I don't care what kind of source control you use. Please use it, though. Um, because what's going to happen is you're going to get 90% of the assignment completed. And then you're going to be like, oh, I've still got three hours to the deadline. Let's go for that last 10%. You go to implement the last 10% and it breaks everything you had working beforehand. And you want the ability to turn back the hands of time and go back to when you had 90% working. 
So we really recommend you use some kind of source control. And again, we don't care what it is. Git is what everybody seems to use these days, but you can use any other tool you want. You can buy a new hard drive or a new laptop every time you write a line of code. I don't care. Although if you're trying to buy new laptops for each line of code, good luck finding laptops these days that are actually good because apparently the crypto miners have stolen every laptop that has a real GPU in it. <laughs> All right. So yeah, use source control, super, super, super important. Um, the other thing I want to say is that um, it's really important that if you have not programmed in C or C++ or in C in a long time, it's really important that you brush up on your C programming skills. We have a C tutorial slides that are posted under on the reading materials part of the website. Um, I can actually, actually, if I try to bring that up, it's going to bring my machine down completely. So we won't bring that up. So yeah, make sure you read through the C tutorial. Um, this is a very heavy C programming course. We are not using C shell as in that weird thing where you type C code in a web browser. No, we're using GCC uh, <laughs> and, and make and all the proper tools. So please make sure that you re-familiarize yourself with using C. Um, when it comes to debugging in this course, GDB is going to be the only thing that really works. Um, printfs can be helpful if you're trying to like limit the scope of where should I even put the breakpoint? I don't even know where my breakpoint should go. But debugging by printfs, as you would have done in CS136, so not going to work for this course. Let me explain why. We are going to be dealing with multi-threaded programs. So that means there's more than one piece of code executing at the same time. And you actually, as you're going to learn, have no control over the order of thread execution. So the threads don't actually for our system execute at the same time. They're going to be switching off between each other. And you have no control over when those switches happen. And as a result, you can get this thing called race conditions, which we'll talk about in the synchronization module. And essentially what a race condition is going to do is every time you run the program, you get a completely different output. And the problem is you'll put the print F's in and your code will magically work. And you'll be like, wow, this is great. And then you comment the print F's out and it goes back to not working. And you're like, what is going on here? I'm so confused. And what's happening is the printfs are forcing or altering the order in which the threads get executed, making it look like your bug was just a fluke. It's not a fluke. It is a problem with your code. Printfs are not good for debugging. The best way for you to debug in this course is to use GDB. If you have not used GDB since CS246, or, and I guess you wouldn't have used it in 136, it is critically important that you figure out how to use it. We have a very brief GDB tutorial, and I think it's either episode two or episode three of um, S21. It will show you the very basics of how to run GDB for OS 161, uh, how to create breakpoints, and how to take a look at the call stack so you can see um, why is this mystery function being called that I don't expect to be called? And um, who called it? So the call stack will let you see what's in the stack. And then you'll know, oh, this function called it. And then you'll look at that line and that function and so on and so forth. So there's a little GDB tutorial there. There's also, um, there's also a GDB tutorial slides on the course website. And of course, if you really want, you can just go on uh, YouTube and learn how to use GDB. Uh, but it is very important you use GDB. The other thing I want to say is I think a lot of you are using VS Code. And for those of you who are watching live on Twitch, just make a note on Twitch there in the chat. Let me know, are you using VS Code? Is that what you use? Um, I, I'm betting it's at least 50% of you are using VS Code. Um, and those of you who are using VS Code, you're going to be trying to connect like the compile thing and the debugging thing into VS Code. 
complete, I have no idea how to use this. <laughs> I'm an old fashioned programmer. I use a terminal and I use VI. And I am happy with that. And I am not, I do not like IDEs. I don't want to use IDEs. Yes, I do have experience with IDEs, but I just don't, I prefer VI. Um, so what I want to say for those of you who are using VS Code is please be careful. Um, I have seen in the past where people used VS Code and then they submitted what was working in VS Code directly to the school and it didn't work. Um, maybe because VS Code changed one of the headers or the way that it was being used. And that can cause a problem. So my recommendation to you is whatever you're doing in VS Code, make sure you actually test it on the school server to make sure it still works. Okay, um, just be cautious about that. Um, I haven't seen a lot of issues with this lately, but usually every term we do see a couple people who have, have issues with this. Um, it is really important though that you do test on the school server. Just trust me on that. Now, another thing I wanted to tell you about is for those of you who are trying to set up OS 161 at home, it's actually quite tricky. So if you're trying to get your own local copy, and I actually have my own local copy working. Um, I think I deleted it already off this computer. Um, but um, it's hard because you have to compile OS 161's tools with very specific versions of GCC. You can only compile it with GCC 4.5, 4.6, or 4.7. Those are the only three versions of GCC that will work out of the box. So if you don't have access to one of those three versions of GCC, it's going to be very difficult to get it working on your local machine. You can get it working for GCC 10 and up. I do have it working with that. Uh, to get that to work, I actually had to make patches to GDB, patches to GCC, and, and other a bunch of other patches. I will post my patches and instructions to Piazza. They work for my Mac. They have not worked for everybody's Mac. They work for, if you adjust some of the commands so that they go from Mac commands to Linux commands, we have noted that it does seem to work for Linux as well, but not for everybody. So it is an option. It's a pain to try to get it to work locally. The easier solutions for local running is to create a Docker image or to use a virtual machine and install some so that you can get the older version of GCC installed. Um, our course website does have a VM. I'm not sure if it's working. It's fairly old and the person who created it is uh, long since graduated. So just a word of warning, <laughs> if, um, if you do download that VM and you can't get it working, um, you can ask other students to see if they had any success, but we can't promise that it works. Um, if you create a Docker image and you have everything working and you want to share it, so long as you have no assignment solutions in it, um, we are happy for you to share it with the rest of the class. Um, this is not something that I see um, as being a, you know, a cheating offense. This is one of those things where helping each other out is actually a really nice thing for you to do. We are going to be moving away from OS 161 uh, in the future. Uh, for many reasons, one of them being it's getting harder and harder to actually run it, but also because we would like to move towards um, something a bit more modern. And in fact, one of the things we're thinking about moving towards is actually Unix version six, which is very old in itself, but um, it's a real operating system, number one. <laughs> and uh, number two, it's Unix. So who doesn't want to play around with it, right? I want to play around with it. But for now, we're in OS 161, so you're kind of limited. Um, yes, I see on Twitch someone said someone posted a new Docker image on Piazza. You are welcome to use it. That's totally fine with us. Um, don't make life harder than it needs to be. The other thing I want to say is don't spend too much time trying to make things work locally. Um, like if you're spending like more than a day trying to get things working locally, give up and use the school surfer. Uh, it's not... You've got four other courses. You've got assignments piling up. Don't spend a week trying to get this to compile on your own machine. It's not worth it. Just use the school machines. And just so you know, if you are using the school machines, and we do monitor 
to see whether they're up or down and we will adjust deadlines is so if this if the server goes down for a few days or even a few hours close to the deadline we'll extend the deadline um, simply because we know that a lot of you are going to be trying to SSH into it and not be successful so relax um, Eventually the course will switch to Windows. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope, 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 not happening. <laughs> Although, so for the record, uh, one thing I do want to say is so some, we always have a few people each term wondering if they can use the, uh, the is it called WSL or something in Windows? Um, where it's like Windows has like a Linux VM installed in it. Um, I have not actually seen any students successful in getting it working under that environment. However, Windows 11 pre-release is out for anyone who wants to engage in that kind of madness. And my understanding is that it actually has a bit better support it's it's got like ubuntu built into it and it even supports like x applications now like actually x windows properly um i actually i i got a new laptop two days ago and we've already upgraded it to windows 11 although i might have to downgrade it so that my adobe products work um <laughs> But the the support for Linux appears to be better. So I don't want to say that you can't get it working under Windows. I'm just saying it might be tricky. We can't really offer you any support because none of us have got it working under Windows. Yeah. All right. So I think this is kind of where I want to leave it for today. I think I've covered all of the... Um, the main elements. You know where to go to get your lecture videos. You know where to go to get help. Uh, you know about GDB and Git and all of those lovely, lovely things. Um, if you need any uh, any help from the instructors, I think Ali and Huma will both have scheduled office hours. For me, if you would like uh, a meeting with me, the best thing to do is to send me an email. I will be doing it on demand. But realistically, the best way that I can help you with your assignments is, and I, I really want to stress this for when you're posting on Piazza or emailing me directly. I want a screenshot of your error. I don't want your GDB dump. I don't want you to describe your error. I want a screenshot. Just a screenshot of your error. 99% of the time, the screenshot of your error is more than enough for me to tell you where you've gone wrong. If you try to describe the error to me, it you're probably missing out on key information. That means that it's going to be difficult for me to tell you where your error probably is. So if you're asking for help from one of the TAs or on Piazza or from one of us in person, screenshot of your error is the most critical piece of thing you need to post. And then if we, we will tell you something, oh, your error is here, and then from there, we might say, okay, send us your code or send me your code. Um, for me, the easiest way for me to help you is A, you give me the screenshot and then I will tell you roughly what your error is. And I might ask you to send me your files. I don't, it's much faster for me to find your bug by reading your code than for you to explain it to me, um, what your code is doing. Because I've, I mean, we've worked through these assignments so many times now, we generally know where all the problems are coming from. So it, it is faster for us to just, here's the screenshot, here's my code, we'll help you find it. <laughs> um, and that, that will streamline the bug fixing process for everybody, so just keep that in mind. Yeah, and um, there's lots of review materials on the course website. We'll be posting lots of extra guides and sample materials on the on Piazza as well. So I feel like you've got everything there. So with that, then I am going to end this episode. I hope you guys all really have a good term. And again, I am sorry that we are not doing uh, the twice a week live stream. Obviously, that is, in my opinion, the, the best 
way to do things, but we're not able to do that this term. Um, but other than that, we will do our best to make your term awesome and, uh, and fun. And hopefully you learn something about operating systems that maybe you didn't know before, like why they're useful and why you should care. <laughs> All right. So with that, have, I guess today's Friday. So have a good weekend. Don't get in any giant parties. Apparently people are getting suspended and such for that. Um, you don't want to do that. So have some fun, go outside, get some fresh air before the term gets a little too crazy and before the weather turns, you know, cold and snowy and nobody actually wants to go outside. Um, so we will, uh, <laughs> we will see you again sometime. And I see that we're CS kids who's partying. Well, I guess that's a good point. <laughs> um, so, I mean, when I was an undergrad, and by the way, I did do my undergrad in UWCS. I, I haven't left here. I've been here for like 21 years at this point. Our version, I guess, w of a party was my house that I lived in. Like all of us would, would play Red Alert 2 together or Warcraft 3 together for like 18 hours straight. That's kind of a party for CS, right? Land party? <laughs> All right, so we'll talk to you uh, another time. Have a great term and I will be available by Piazza and uh, email whenever you need some help.